हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम टू द थर्ड लेक्चर ऑफ ट्वेल्थ वीक ऑफ द कोर्स प्रोसेस इक्विपमेंट डिज़ाइन एंड दिस इज बेसिकली फिफ्टी एट्थ लेक्चर ऑफ दिस कोर्स एंड हीयर वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस डिज़ाइन ऑफ डिस्टिलेशन कॉलम एंड वी विल कंसिडर मैकेनिकल डिज़ाइन ओवर हीयर इफ यू रिमेंबर लास्ट टू लेक्चर्स ऑफ दिस वीक देयर वी हैव डिस्कस्ड मैकेनिकल डिज़ाइन एंड वी हैव कंसिडर डिफरेंट stresses which are generated due to different loads in the shell okay so those two lectures were devoted to shell and now we will focus on the support okay so let's start this lecture so when we consider design of the vessel that cannot be completed without selection and design of the suitable support for it and also without examining the effect of support on the shell right so in this way we so in this way design of support is also as important as design of tall vessel or design of vessel right so usually tall vessels when we consider these are basically distillation column absorption column and evaporator star tank reactor and these are supported in vertical position okay so some of the vessels are usually placed horizontally so for that we need horizontal support but that is not in the category of tall vessels okay for tall vessels which are placed always vertically we consider the vertical support and the vertical support available which is used for such tall vessels is basically the skirt support okay <coughs> skirt supports are cylindrical or conical steel shell attached to the bottom tangent of the vertical vessel bottom tangent means where shell is attached to the head okay and we consider that where shell ends because that is basically the tangent to the shell right so these supports are found to be most suitable for tall vessel subjected to longitudinal bending stress okay so let's see how to design the skirt support and you understand that if i say design of skirt support or design of tall vessel it means i'm focusing on the thickness of that particular part of the vessel right so here also we will focus on thickness of the skirt support okay and if i speak about the thickness of skirt support it means thickness of the wall or the metal sheet by which this support is prepared okay so the so the maximum stress will be induced in the skirt due to action of dead weight of the vessel and wind or seismic bending moment as the skirt is not subjected to internal or external pressure like the vessel shell okay so if you recall the last lecture where we have discussed the resultant longitudinal stresses okay there we considered stresses generated due to dead load due to operating pressure and due to wind load or seismic load right so all these stresses will work equally to the support except the stress generated due to pressure because support will not have any operating pressure as the case will be with the vessel right so apart from the stress generated due to pressure we consider all other stresses to design the skirt so let's consider that to determine the thickness two conditions should be satisfied the first is when i consider the tensile stress and sigma z is the resultant tensile stress and that should be generated in the support right so here we have this expression sigma z w so here we have this expression sigma z w m or sigma z s m we will consider maximum of these two and minus sigma z w that is because of the dead load and minus because this i am considering as tensile condition and this dead load gives the compressive stress okay so that should be less than or equal to fj cos alpha further i consider compressive stress that is sigma z compressive and in that case all these stresses are positive and that should be less than or equal to 0.125 e t by d cos alpha 
okay so in this way we calculate the thickness of support usually we consider the thickness of the support using these two conditions right and wherever i am finding the larger thickness that i will choose as the final shell thickness okay so now we will consider the parameters which are associated with these expressions like capital j that you can see over here it is circumferential well joint efficiency factor and it is 1 if made by single length and it is 0.7 if double welded butt joint is considered right so you can consider when i make the shell with a single metal plate and we roll it and we weld at one side only we consider j as 1 right if i am having different parts of it so multiple point so at multiple points we will weld it and therefore we will consider j factor as less right and that welding we consider as double welded butt joint okay so so let's see other parameters here i am having the t which is basically skirt thickness d is the skirt diameter how to find this that we will discuss alpha is top angle of conical skirt with vessel shell okay if i am having the shell like this alpha is basically this angle okay so it is 10 degree maximum and 0 degree for cylindrical shell so usually what happen when i am having the cylindrical shell we consider support which is also cylindrical okay and that is simply welded at the bottom okay so in that case inner diameter of the support will be equal to outer diameter of the shell right and if i am having the angle alpha in that case you already know the height of this uh, support okay and you know this angle so this distance you can consider by let's say height is basically small h so h sin alpha okay that will give this distance and the twice of this we can add to outer diameter of the shell to find out the diameter of the skirt so in this way you can find out the skirt diameter right now whatever thickness we will calculate for the skirt that thickness should never be less than 7 mm if it is less than 7 mm we consider thickness at least 7 mm for the skirt support okay so this criteria you should check at the end of the calculations so let's start the skirt wall thickness calculation first of all i am considering tensile stress first of all i am considering tensile stress okay so this is the expression now here you should understand the fact that so if i am focusing either on tensile stress or compressive stress i am basically considering the extreme condition okay so when that tensile stress will be maximum if i am having this shell right and column is available over it okay so when the stress so when the tensile stress in this support is maximum when whatever load is falling on this uh, support it should be minimum then only this tensile stress would be maximum because tensile stress would be because tensile stress would be in this direction or in this direction but it should not compress okay so in that case all stresses generated into this should be minimum fine so we should consider this expression that sigma z tensile maximum should be equal to sigma z wm or sigma z sm and this should be minimum right and uh, this dead load stress that should also be minimum and that should be equal to fj cos alpha okay so here we are calculating the stress thickness so how that t term will appear okay because if you see no t term is there okay so if we further consider each of these stresses sigma z wm or sigma z sm minimum i have to choose okay so let's say if i consider sigma z wm okay depending upon this you can consider the required expression if i consider this then 
at what condition this will be minimum? This would be minimum when I am having m w minimum, right? And when this m w or the moment generated due to wind will be min or the bending moment generated due to wind will be minimum at this condition when I am having p w minimum, ok. p w is basically the wind load and uh, when this would be minimum? When I am considering d should be equal to d naught, right. If it is falling only on the shell, we consider that p w should be minimum. Otherwise, you can imagine the p w that is k 1, k 2, h 1, p 1 all these factor will be fixed. Only the change will occur when I change the diameter. So, in this case you can consider d should be d naught, ok. And I am assuming over here that insulation is not available, ok. So, in this way you can find the stress generated due to wind load should be minimum. Now, we will see sigma z w minimum and that would be minimum when I consider minimum weight and minimum weight will include the weight of shell as well as weight of head only, right. And here I am not including any attachment or weight of the liquid etcetera. This is the minimum possible load because vessel will include at least these two parts, right. And when we consider the wind moment and when we consider the wind stress, their K2 should be computed at T minimum and T minimum means at W minimum, right. So, if I calculate the minimum weight, I should consider the minimum longitudinal stress through this expression, ok. W minimum by pi t d i plus t, ok. Now, what is this t? What is this t? This t is basically t of a skirt, not the t of shell. Now, because all these stresses are falling in support only, ok. So, in this case, this complete expression you can equate to d naught, right? And this t will be and this t will be of skirt support. In the similar line, this d i plus t you can replace with d naught and this t you can consider as t of skirt. So, when we put all these expression over here, you can find the t parameter and that you can calculate while considering this condition. Okay. So, in this way we can calculate support thickness when tensile stress is maximum. And let us see how to calculate the skirt thickness when compressive stress is maximum. Okay. So, this is the expression we can have maximum compressive stress when this would be maximum and this would be maximum okay. and that should be equal to 0 0.125 E T by D into cos alpha right. So, you can understand that when compressive stress will be maximum, if this is the support and I am having shell over here. So, whatever the maximum possible load will fall on this support, compressive stress in this support would be maximum, right. So, considering this fact, let us calculate the shell wall thickness, ok. So, we have to maximize sigma z w m and sigma z s m either of these two, ok. So, if I am having this expression for sigma z w m, I should maximize this, ok. So, I can, so I, so I have to calculate maximum m w and when this would be maximum, if I am having maximum p w, ok. And when this p w would be maximum, when I am considering d insulation outer instead of d o, right. In this way, we can consider the stress generated due to wind load, right. And here we have another factor that is k 2 and k 2 will depend on period of vibration and in this case, we should calculate maximum period of vibration depending upon the maximum weight and maximum weight how I can calculate? weight of shell, weight of insulation, weight of liquid and weight of attachment. All weights we have to include over here, ok. But here you should keep in mind that what is this W liquid? This is basically weight of the liquid 
and at maximum possible condition what we can consider? We can consider that complete vessel is filled with the liquid. Okay. So, previously when you have designed the shell thickness, so previously when you have designed the shell, you have considered that liquid is available only on the trays. Okay, but now you should consider that complete column is filled with the liquid. So, in that case weight of liquid should, so in that case weight of liquid should be simply rho g h and h is the total height of the shell. It will not include height of the support and for the obvious reasons. So, once I am having w max I can calculate sigma z w max using this expression and here again this you have to replace with the d o of the skirt support d o of the shell if I consider the cylindrical support right in the similar line this can also be represented by d naught this t is the support thickness this t is the support thickness okay and this t is also the support thickness and this d is the diameter of the skirt support. So, in this way you can calculate the shell. So, in this way you can calculate the skirt thickness and wherever you are finding the larger value from maximizing the tensile stress and maximizing the compressive stress you can choose that value. But you should check that the chosen value should be greater than at least 7 mm right otherwise you have to consider 7 mm as the skirt thickness right. Now we will consider few more parts as far as support of the tall vessel is considered. So, here we are considering design of a skirt bearing plate and anchor bolt ok. So, what is bearing plate? When I consider shell like this ok at the bottom it is basically attached with the ring. Okay, that is basically the metal ring fine. If you see the top view of this, this is basically the metal ring and shell is welded at the center of it or at one edge of it right. So, this is basically the shell and this, this is the and this is the complete width of the bearing plate. Okay. So, we also have to consider skirt bearing plate as well as anchor bolt. What is this anchor bolt that also we will discuss. So, the bearing plate at the base of the skirt is essential to increase the load bearing contact area with the foundation because when you because when you attach the skirt with the foundation or support with the foundation you are basically attach support with the bearing plate and then that bearing plate is attached with the foundation ok. So, bearing plate design is very important as far as support design is concerned ok. So, bearing plate which is welded to the bottom of the skirt of the vessel must be securely anchored to the concrete foundation by means of anchor bolt embedded in the concrete to prevent overturning from the bending moment induced by wind or seismic load ok. So, that point we should consider to strong. So, that point we should consider to make the skirt support strong, but what is this anchor bolt and overturning all these we will discuss in all these we will discuss in subsequent slides ok. But first of all we should calculate the thickness of bearing plate and that we can calculate by this expression T B P which is equal to L root over 3 sigma C by F right. So, here sigma C is basically the maximum compressive stress between bearing plate and foundation. It means that how it means that what is the maximum possible stress is it means that what is the maximum possible stress bearing plate bears ok and that should be the compressive stress and we can calculate this by this expression where I am considering maximum weight and maximum of bending moment due to wind as well as seismic load right. And A and S we can calculate by these terms where Z is basically the modulus and A is the 
area which you can find through this which you can find through this term right so in this way i can calculate sigma c and uh, whatever maximum compressive load is falling on the bearing plate we should consider that to find out the thickness of the bearing plate and here we have some of the nomenclature which you can see where l is basically width of the bearing plate okay how to decide this l that also we will see now here we should check the thickness of bearing plate if thickness of bearing plate is more than 20 mm so what we have to do in that case we should consider bearing plate along with the gusset plates okay so bearing plate you know if i consider this support so this is attached with this plate and this plate is basically called as the bearing plate right and uh, we can put a triangle at right angle we can put a metal plate in a triangular shape with right angle and this we can attach over here and this is basically called as the gusset plate so this consider so whatever load is appearing on the bearing plate some of the load this gusset plate bears okay so if thickness of bearing plate is more than 20 mm we should consider gusset plate and if i am using the gusset plate i have to calculate bearing plate thickness again okay so that we can calculate considering so that we can calculate considering this expression where tgp is equal to 6m max by f this gp is not the gusset plate thickness this is the bearing plate thickness only when gusset plates are used okay where m is the maximum of mx or my what is that mx or my that we will see this b is basic here i am using this b which is basically the gusset spacing and if i know the gusset spacing i can calculate number of gussets and that is pi dos by b pi do dos is dos is basically the outer diameter of the skirt support right so as far as this mx my or b is concerned and l is concerned we should refer this table okay you can see here i am having l by b where l is the width of the gusset where l is the width of the bearing plate and b is the gusset spacing okay mx and my you can calculate whichever is maximum that you have to do whichever is maximum that you have to use to find out bearing plate thickness when you are considering the gusset plates fine so now we will focus on the anchor bolt okay and for that first of all we have to check whether anchor bolt is required or not okay so first of all let's see what is anchor bolt anchor bolt is basically the bolt which is attached with the concrete foundation it means some part of the bolt is attached with the concrete foundation and upper part of that is attached to the bearing with the nut okay i will show the image related to that so that it will be clear to you but first of all we should check whether anchor bolt is required or not and that we can check through this equation which equates minimum stress between bearing plate and concrete foundation to these parameters okay now here i am considering minimum stress okay if you see the expression of this this is if you see its expression it includes w minimum by a mm or ms by z okay this should be w okay so in this way you can consider w minimum which is the minimum weight of empty vessel without any internal attachment it means this w minimum considers only the shell as well as head right so when we consider this sigma minimum what it shows basically if you see it is equating to v if you see it is equating to w minimum and mw as well as ms right so what is the meaning of this it is counting the overturning okay if i am having the support as well as vessel and here at the bottom i am having the bear plate right so 
इट शुड बी सो टू चेक वेदर एंकर बोल्ट इज रिक्वायर्ड और नॉट आई शुड कंसिडर द केस आई शुड कंसिडर द एक्सट्रीम केस ओके इट मीन्स आई एम अज्यूमिंग दैट इट विल ओवर टर्न ओके इन दैट केस मिनिमम वेट विच इज फॉलोइंग ओवर दिस दैट आई एम कंसिडरिंग ओके वॉट इज द पॉइंट ओवर हियर टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इफ आई एम कंसिडरिंग मैक्सिमम प्रेशर फाइन इन दैट केस वॉट विल हैपन इट विल बी मोर स्टेबल एंड दैट आई डोंट वॉन्ट बिकॉज आई एम चेकिंग द एंकर बोल्ट कंडीशन राइट सो टू चेक दैट एक्सट्रीम कंडीशन विल बी दैट ओवर टर्निंग इज पॉसिबल सो आई एम कंसिडरिंग मिनिमम सो इन दैट केस आई एम कंसिडरिंग मिनिमम स्ट्रेस राइट now to now to calculate that this w minimum should be considered okay now what about that here you understand that bending moment and moment due to seismic load should be maximum because when it will be maximum then the vessel will turn then the vessel will overturn or then the vessel will fall right so this should be minimum but this should be maximum that condition you should check and so if i am having sigma minimum value if it is less than 0 what is the meaning of this it means this will dominate and it will let the vessel fall okay so if this sigma minimum value is less than 0 it means bolt must be anchored okay in that case let's see what is anchored bolt okay if you consider this i am having the bolt and maximum part of this bolt is inside this concrete foundation right and uh, we can have some upper section also where this bearing plate is attached with this nut okay and here i am having the column with the support right so we can understand that anchor bolts are required to remove or to avoid falling of the column or to avoid overturning of the column right so you can see the so you can see the anchor bolt and size of these in this image detail you can find over here further if sigma minimum is greater than or equal to 0 in that case we should consider the stability factor j and j we can calculate by this expression okay if j is less than 1.5 it means anchoring is required if j is more than or equal to 1.5 anchoring is not required okay so in this way you can check whether anchor bolts are required or not now once it is required you have to calculate number of bolts as whatever total load is available that should be supported by all bolts okay in that case np bolt should be equal to sigma minimum and a right further np bolt we can find out as ar n into fb and a we can find out by this expression so let's see the parameter p bolt is the load on one anchor bolt ar is basically root area of the bolt if i am having the bolt like this okay each bolt has some threads right so root area is basically this area so you know the size of the bolt so this parameter will be known to you so you can calculate area of that section and that will be nothing but the root area n is the number of bolts so how you have to calculate this you should equate with this because you already know the sigma minimum and a okay and ar for a given bolt you can find out fb is the allowable stress of the bolt material and so you can find out number of bolts okay so in this way you can complete the design of skirt support okay and we will see the design of tall vessels as well as its support in subsequent lectures so that's all for now thank you